feel disappointed by Dynasty Wars 9 Empires or just itching for a Warriors Empires game but don't want to give your hard earned money away for an overpriced bare bones sorry excuse of a game that is Dynasty Wars 9 Empires, well why not try out or replay what I consider to be the best Warriors Empires title to date, Samurai Warriors 4 Empires. Samurai Warriors 4 Empires uses Samurai Warriors 4 as the base to build upon, so the combat is still mostly the same. You have the sway strings, the triangle charge attacks, the all powerful musou attacks, and the all two broken hyper attacks that can wipe out waves and waves of enemy in a flash. The main difference between this game and the original Samurai Warriors 4 is the more focus on capturing bases to advance your supply line until you can reach the enemy's main camp and take out the enemy's commander. Also, unique to Samurai Warriors Empire's titles is the ability to change attack formation of your army, which is just a fancy way to apply buffs like enhancing attack or defense or speed, but the enemy can also apply formation change on their own and one formation can trump over another and render the effect of the disadvantage formation completely moot, like defense boost trumps over attack boost, and attack boost trumps over speed boost, and speed boost trumps over defense boost. The formations also have free tiers with higher tiers trumps over the lower one, so this gives sorts of additional strategic thinking in approaching battle, as the right formation change at the right time can mean a swift victory or a struggle to survive or even outright defeat. Aside from formations, you can also bring in and carry out tactics mid-battle, which offer various effects to nudge the battle more into your advantage, like adding more time to the time limit of the battle or offering auto muscle recovery to your character or summon rank of arrows to help you attacking the enemy. Ultimately, it's still just a musou game so it's not like you're gonna be very desperate for these bonuses, but there's a very healthy amount of variety to the tactics you can carry out so that's pretty neat. The combat is okay enough. The game uses Samurai Wars 4 as the base to build upon, so it's the most fast-paced title in the series and probably the most feels good one too thanks to the hyper attacks and all the updated movesets to the playable characters. But in exchange for that, the stage designs take a nose dive in quality, with every map look very noticeably hallway-ish, and these hallway stages really hurt for Empires a lot more than the original Samurai Wars 4, as it safely limits how the supply lines connect the bases, and just make most battles very straightforward, with you slowly taking bases after bases until you can reach the enemy main camp. There are a few stages where the layout is tragical enough where taking the right base at the right time can chain capture all the bases and give a huge boost in advantage to your army, but those stages are few and between and most are just rather linear and hallwayish stage with only one or two paths forward. In comparison, Dynasty Wars 7 Empires has much more open stage designs so you have a lot more freedom in approaching battle and the right base captured at the right time can force the whole enemy army to abandon their advance and give you an edge in battle. The switching between two characters anytime in the battle is still present in this game, but that option is now limited to just characters with relationships with each other, and the progression of a battle is too linear as it is because you only get objective pops up every now and then and you can safely ignore character switching thing all together and not losing much from it. I mean, having more options is always a nice thing and I'm not against the mechanic. It's just that the game doesn't do much with said mechanic. I once again blame this on the stage designs of the original Samurai Wars for not being all that good to begin with. At least the AI is pretty good though, 
Your allies can hold their own and can be useful by taking bases in your absence or even holding off enemy officers so you can advance from the other end of the map. Unlike a certain other worst Empire's game that just got released recently where your allies may as well not exist because of how absolutely useless they are. The enemy AI is also pretty good too, at least by modern Musou standard. They can and will gang up on you if the number is on their side, though you probably won't see much defeat in this game because it honestly isn't all that hard even on higher difficulties. With that said though, if you go into battle not being too overleveled or have a troop slightly at disadvantage compared to the enemy, you might find some interesting situations where you just can't smash the button through the battle and might have to use your head a little bit. Combat is not all there is to this game though, half of the game will be spent in the politics phase where you can carry out various political tasks. You have a miniature castle with rooms for different purposes. There's a room to deal with territory development, a room to deal with military affairs, a room to deal with human resources, and later in the game, you can upgrade the castle to unlock more rooms to deal with strategy planning and carrying out diplomacy schemes. You assign two officers to each room and based on the officers' characteristics, affinity with each other, and the territories you have on hand, the political development as well as the political tasks suggested by the officer will differ. When you first starting out, you are only able to carry out one action per month, but as you progress through the game, conquering more territories and gathering more fame, you will slowly be able to carry out more and more actions, up to 5 per month. And once you have accepted an officer's suggestion to do certain tasks, you unlock the option to carry out that task later even if no officer makes that suggestion that month, at the cost of the task being carried out being less effective. So there's a very clear sense of progression through a playthrough with little to no moment of staleness because there's almost always new things to unlock right up until the very end of the playthrough, even if the political aspect as well as territory developing system aren't actually that deep to be honest. This is no way a bad thing though mind you, as far Empires at its core is still a Musou game, so I think this is the best political system that the game could offer without scurrying dangerously close to an actual strategy game and making things overcomplicated and undermine the action aspect of the game. I would love to see future titles to develop the system even more though, just saying that this is the best the series has to offer up until now, at least in my opinion. But the gameplay isn't the best thing Samurai Wars 4 Empires has to offer though, that's in fact, shockingly enough, just to the writing in the game. Empire's titles have never had a traditional story mode, so the game have never had that much story going on except Free Empires, but there's a reason it didn't receive an English localization, I think. Might talk about that game somewhere in the future when I feel like it. At best, there are various small events involving various playable characters that give you much insight to what the characters are, and those events were the main highlights of the PS2 Wars Empires games in my opinion. Starting with Dusty Warrior 6, the series starts to emphasize more on the role-playing aspect, and the interaction between playable characters are replaced with generic events that can happen to any character with different characters having different dialogues, making for a more personalized experience with each playthrough. With Dusty Wars 7 Empires arguably became the peak of the series for the officer play experience with its way of life system where almost everything you do gives feedback that affects the gameplay and events that you can trigger. Samurai Wars 4 Empires took this to the next level where it's not just that one officer that you control have things happening around them, but everyone under your banner will you develop on their own, have events happening around them and even creating new relationships even if they're not the main officer you choose to start the game with. Taking the same two officers to numerous battles together, and they may form a bond with each other. 
or that one officer that you control in that one battle fought so voraciously that it impressed an officer of the opposite side and the two might start a rivalry relationship with each other. Or maybe you as the daimyo didn't pay attention to your army financial state and invested too much in military affairs that your money is running low so one of your retainers offered to relieve some of your burden. There are just so many events for so many situations in this game and they can all happen to everyone under your banner that it almost feels like the game auto generates a new story every time you play instead of you having to kind of force yourself to roleplay with the characters and fill in the blank on what happens between events and battles and all of this combined makes every playthrough really do feel like a fresh new experience. But that's not all. The game even went further and beyond by making unique generic officers from parts of custom officers. Wait, did I really forget to mention that you can make custom officers in the game station? Uh, now you know. You can make custom characters with edit mode in this game. There are tons of outfits for you to customize your characters and all 50 movesets from the unique puzzle characters as well as 3 generic officer movesets and 2 wholly unique custom characters only movesets are available to choose from. It's the biggest edit mode in the Samurai series up to date and this could really give you tons of fun if you're into custom character editing. Anyway. All these unique generic officers that are made up of custom officer parts or have unique lines or even personal events to them that have distinguished themselves from the custom officers that you create. When I first played the game years ago, I actually didn't pay much attention to them because I thought it was whatever since I prefer the playable muscle characters and my own custom characters more. But now that I'm more knowledgeable about the Sengoku period and can understand Japanese somewhat, I've come to appreciate what they did a lot more as it shows that the devs really care about the game and the characters inhibiting the world of the game and want those characters to feel alive as much as possible, unique or generic otherwise. Sure, the dialogue just aren't all that deep or Shakespearean or anything, and most events are fairly short with only two or three lines being spoken. And in some cases, it's rather obvious that the characters were just reading off their scripts, leading to somewhat awkward situations where it doesn't really feel like the characters were talking to one another. But taking into account that there are 50 fully unique playable characters with varying colorful personalities, a whole bunch of generic officers and the potential of custom characters too. It's really amazing that the game could have these many events and every single character has lines unique to them to every single one of these events. And in case you're not satisfied or are part with the all too familiar scenarios the game has to offer like Okehazama or Honoji, you can create a custom scenario with any forces and officers on the map to your liking with Jesse's mode. The work is your playground, make your own destiny, go nuts! Man, that's cringe. Arguably the best looking Muso game of last gen, this is thanks to the graphical improvement that the original Samurai Wars 4 has when it made the jump from PS3 to PS4. The game runs really good with no visible hiccups, even with all these characters models on screen all at once and only very rarely stutter a little bit when too many effects are on screen, but this is a very rare occurrence in my experience. I think the fact that this game could perform so well is extra amazing considering just how many character models could be on screen all at once, up to about a hundred or so. Or maybe that's just because that's just me coming up from the Sea Wars 9 Empires where the enemy count isn't as numerous and that game still struggles hard to maintain a constant frame rate all the freaking time. The overall look of the game is very bright and colorful and the models for the fully unique Muso characters are really good and hold up very well in my opinion. The unique generic officers and custom characters aren't quite as good looking because 
you know, custom characters and all, but they aren't part per se, they are just not up to bar with the most of characters in my opinion. If there's anything that I could say was bad about the game visual, it would be the model animations during the dialogue events, as the animations used are pretty generic and shared across all characters and in some cases the models can be very stiff, like really, really stiff. I like the OST enough, I guess. I especially enjoy the music plays during the politics phase in various events and think that they fit the look of the game and set the tone really well. But as for the music plays during the combat, most of them don't stand out that much to me, they're not bad per se, they just don't stand out to me much at all. Probably no help to how loud the sound effects can be and most of my favorite tracks from the original Samurai Wars 4 are saved for the historical event puddles. Most of the time my mind just kinda filters out the background music and just focus on the game visually, which isn't a very good thing to say about a game's OST, but maybe it's all just me being an unconscious swine that I am, who knows? I've always preferred the OST from Dusty Wars over Samurai Wars after all. I played the hell out of this game back when it first came out, and when I replayed the game in 2022, years after I last played it, I still enjoy it a lot and generally think that almost every playthrough offers a fresh new experience thanks to its fast list of events and rich writing. Especially now that I could understand Japanese somewhat, I could hear and recognize some of the differences between the Japanese script and the English translation. Like in Japanese, a lot of the characters proudly pronounce their names or their famous titles when they face you in battle, which just screams, Look, I'm important! Come and take my head if you dare! Whereas the English translation just you the generic pronouns, I or me most of the time. I'm not faulting the English translation though mind you, just something neat that I only realized recently and wanted to share. I enjoy the combat enough because high five attacks is just so OB that just feels so good, more than waves after waves of enemy with it. But even with my guilty pleasure in the form of the high five attacks, the stage design still limit how much I can enjoy it, because there's only so many times that I can fight my way down the whole way each maps before everything just mesh into each other and become a repetitive meaningless button smashing fest. The formations and tactics you can bring into a battle do somewhat migrate their repetitiveness, but they don't change the combat enough to salvage the stage design. I still hold Samurai's 4 Empires in very high regards and think it's the best Empires title in the series though, that's literally what I put in the title of this video. Now, before you angrily type in the comments about how I'm an unconscious swine with no taste who dares to think that there's the world 7 empires isn't the best empires title of all time, know that I also hold there's the world 7 empires in very very high regards. I struggled quite a bit when comparing the two games, but ultimately decided that Samurai Wars 4 Empires is the overall better game and aged better than Destiny Wars 7 Empires, which was why I made this video instead of making a review for Destiny Wars 7 Empires. Please do feel free to write in the comments why I'm wrong and why Destiny Wars 7 Empires is the undisputed lord and savior of the series though. Always a pleasure to see what others think about my favorite video game series. Samurai Warriors 4 Empires is the best Warriors Empires game in my opinion, with a very fun and addicting gameplay, even if said gameplay is severely held back by its less than stellar stage designs. But to make up for that, the game has excellent writing in the form of its large list of events, its way of handling characterizations as well as relationship between characters in the game, and it makes for almost every new playthrough a new fresh experience. The game also offers a very good pacing so that you don't quite run out things to unlock until the end of a playthrough. If I were to give scores to the game, it would be something like this.
ですがあなたならば乗り切れるきっと。天下不武ここになれり I'm kinda curious and look forward to how they'll handle the inevitable Samurai Wars 5 Empires. They cut so many daimyo characters in Samurai Wars 4 Poster Boys with Samurai Wars 5 that it would be awkward to see them back as Jerix. Oh, hi there, Sanada, not in Samurai Wars 5, Yukimura.